Welcome to this week's edition of Special Prosecutor with Larry Klayman. You saw me laughing with my friend and colleague Judah Friedman at the beginning. Judah's going to join us as co-host, along with their other two co-hosts, Uncle Sam on my right and Donald Trump on my left. Of course, I'm not sure he wants to be positioned on my left, but I'm bringing them on because the theme of this show is that sometimes good can come out of bad in some ways. It sounds bizarre, but it's true in this instance. And of course, we're living in an age of the Trump factor, where anyone who is associated with or supports Donald Trump is targeted for extinction, extermination, legally, not just by courts, but by bar associations, by everyone. Uh, this is the world we live in, as Professor Alan Dershowitz, the liberal law professor from Harvard, emeritus, has said, it's a new age of McCarthyism, only it's worse because McCarthy was kind of old. He was going to go away. But today, when you're dealing here with a lot of what's going on in this country, with the youth in this country, with the kids that are going out there, these white, stupid kids from Ivy League universities who think they understand the Middle East and what's going on between Israel and Hamas and everything else, uh, it becomes basically just a, a show in, in futility, if not destruction, of this country. But anyway, I want to turn it over to Judah right now because his thoughts about the good coming out of the bad is what influenced me in this show. And I have our little friends, Uncle Sam and Donald Trump here, uh, to make a point. Uh, these people have been in my office for a long time. They kind of hang out. They talk to each other when I'm not around. And sometimes I wind up talking to myself. So here's where we are today. Judah, give me your thoughts on why you can get the good out of the bad. Well, first of all, as we bring in, as we bring in the new year and happy new year to everybody. Happy new year, everybody. Merry Christmas, belated Hanukkah. But the reason I, uh, the first thing I want to say is this is where I always get into disagreements though with people on the left, especially with people like Dershowitz, who I grew up knowing many of his uh, really good family members, actually, uh, that McCarthy wasn't terrible. McCarthy, there were a lot of sub actual subversives in the government. Remember that. I mean, we have to be clear there were subversives. Did he lie? Did he drink too much? Yeah, but there were actually a lot of subversives. We have way more now. That's the big problem. The point I was trying to bring up with the Trump factor and telling you why it might be a blessing in disguise that Trump actually, quote unquote, lost was because the reality is in the last three years, what we've witnessed with the progressive left on all fronts, on foreign policy, domestic policy, DEI, ESG, which running rampant across college campuses, uh, had Trump won, they might have had a decent time hiding those perversions, those extremely devious perversions. Now, had Trump won again, who would we be left with running for president? Mike Pence. Larry, you'd have a better chance of becoming president than Mike Pence. And they would have had four years to get their progressive policies in place. As a friend of mine brought up, when you think about Nazi Germany, the reason why it works so well, right, with 33 percent essentially voting in the Nazi party was because they could actually run the trains on time. They were actually good at what they did. If the left of today could get the trains running on time, we'd be up, you know, what's Creek with no paddle. And that's a blessing in disguise, in my humble opinion, Larry. That's why I brought it up to you is they literally with Mayor Pete can't get the trains or planes running on time. Imagine if they were able to implement all these, everything that we've witnessed in the college campuses across America with, let's say, a president like Gavin Newsom, Larry, there'll be no coming back. Well, you're probably right. And it's not just that we drew out uh, these people on the left in terms of what they're about. and We know what they're about. They're essentially Obamaites. Nearly the entire Biden regime is composed of Obamaites. And of course, we now see just this week that you've got the uh, Secretary of Homeland Security, Alexandra Mayorkas, who's a member of the Jewish left, and Anthony Blinken, another member of the Marxian Jewish left, going down to Mexico, trying to create an appearance that something's going to happen. So we see these people, and we now know who they are. And we know what 
our task is in trying to legally and peacefully take them out. And we also see it with regard to the youth in this country. If you look at these peaceful protesters, if you want to call them that, they're not peaceful at all, not like the January 6th protesters were, you can see that we've drawn out the Jew hatred and the Christian hatred in this country. It's now obvious. We know who the enemies are. We've drawn it out what's going on at Ivy League universities with presidents like Claudine Gay. I wonder how she got that last name. <laughs> she must have contrived it at the time. Uh, a, not only just an anti-white racist, anti-Semitic racist, but also someone who is unbelievably dishonest, obviously into affirmative action, president of Harvard, that couldn't write articles by herself, had to had to take passages from other people to plagiarize. And then Harvard covers it up by saying, oh, it's just duplicative citation. That's what they call it. So all of this stuff is now out on the table. And we American patriots, and that's why I have Uncle Sam with me today, because Uncle Sam needs you. We need you at Freedom Watch. Go to freedomwatchusa.org. We have a huge task ahead of us, but at least now we know who the cockroaches are, in effect, the enemy. And it's out there. And that is a positive thing. Now, the other thing that we're dealing with, I was walking down the street today. I sent it to you, Judah. Unbelievable, right? Look at this. This is a card. I was looking for a New Year's card. And this is what I came up with. You're my cup of Joe. <laughs> I mean, can, can you believe that? I mean, it was. I said to the clerk, I said, this is so stupid that I had to buy it. You know, and it's not cheap either. That's not a cheap uh, card. But... This tells you everything about the American people, how dumbed down we are. You, I mean, to even try to sell this in California, okay, which is where I am this week, is just unbelievable, even by their standards. So here we are, uh, January 1st, 2024. The country is on the verge of extinction. Uh, China, just a few days ago, threatened to take Taiwan again. They say they're serious this time. And if they're not going to do it now, when? It's open season with Biden as president. That's why I, I got the card. <clears throat> if you're going to do it, do it now. If you're Iran and now they're enriching their uranium three times what they did before, they're going to get over 90 percent. They're going to have three atom bombs in a short while. Do it now. When you see what's going on in the Red Sea, in the Persian Gulf with attacking ships, ships and the United States doesn't respond. All it does is shoot down the missiles and sometimes they get through. Do it now. We are on the verge of a potential nuclear holocaust, a true World War III, not just with China, but with Russia, obviously, with Iran, with Venezuela, uh, which is being supported by Iran and others. And in South America, you know, they, they harbor Hezbollah and everything else down there. And this is where we are at the start of the new year. But you raised a good point, because at least now we know who the enemy is. I mean, we knew it before, but now we know it in greater relief. Gina, take it away. No, I listen, I think you're hundred percent right. But I think, you know, it's it's funny. It's not funny. You know, I do the show with uh, Ben Stein called The World According to Ben Stein. And uh it's funny when people compliment your show, Larry, and they say good show. And I'm like, Well, what would it take to get the great part? But uh anyways, that's neither here nor there. We were talking about Iran, and somebody said in one of the comments. What does Iran have to do with anything? You know, and I'm just like, he didn't, I have no idea if that was the accent. I'm just assuming that's the accent and America first. And I'm thinking to myself, are you, this is scarily, Larry, how many, I don't want to say Trump supporters, but fringe Trump supporters and maybe 10% actually think like, what? so what if Iran gets a nuclear, uh, there's a nuclear Iran? How does that affect us? And they do, do not understand the world map. They do not understand how much that affects us. That's why when Israel took out Iraq's nuclear reactor in 84, the world was very happy. They got mad at Israel, but wink, wink, we're happy you did it. Israel killed 12 Revolutionary Guards today, part of Iran's Revolutionary Guards. I, Larry, they are not going to act, okay? Iran will not act. So you're completely right. Now is the perfect time. Fat man and little boy, the Ayatollahs, end this story. Trust me, the only reason there is a revolutionary guard is to protect the mullahs and the Ayatollahs, okay? That's the only reason. You, we, I, the, 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 this whole idea is so Biden or Obama could win the Nobel Peace Prize. It's the only reason we're not attacking Iran. 
they will not do anything, Larry. Actually, I didn't know that we took out some uh, revolution. Israel, revolution. Israel, Israel. Yeah. 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 Obviously not uh, Biden. Where did yeah. that happen? Uh, happened this morning, I guess, uh, either in Syria, where they or Lebanon, I think Lebanon. I oh, okay. Lebanon. No, they need to go to Iran. They need to take it out yeah. at the source right now. You know, Israel needs to do the same thing, frankly. I mean, Israel needs to do it, but the problem is they're being they're they're, they're being grabbed by the you know what's by every leader around the world. And what what was it yesterday that they said we severe condemnation, Larry? That's going to work. Yeah, well, we've got about one minute left, and I hope that people will donate uh, to Freedom Watch before New Year's. The show will be out uh, Friday, and it also over the weekend you get a tax deductible contribution. Please go to freedomwatchusa.org. We need the help. We are your Justice Department. You have no Justice Department. And we're going to be right back with more of Special Prosecutor with Larry Klayman, with Judah Friedman, the host of The World According to Ben Stein, and my colleague and friend. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. We're back with Special Prosecutor with Larry Klayman, Judah Friedman, Uncle Sam, and I've got uh, Donald Trump sitting on my lap. Uh, let's hope that doesn't cause anybody uh, more than just simple consternation, or shall we say constipation at this point in time. But I want to talk about what's been happening with these various states eliminating Trump from the ballot. It's not just a, a Colorado, but many states have that under consideration. Maine just did. It's going to go to the Maine Supreme Court eventually and the U.S. Supreme Court. But under ordinary circumstances, with at least 50 percent of this country favoring Donald Trump, whether you like him or not, whether you think he should be president or not, the reality is that 50 percent of this country is plus is prepared to vote for him in all likelihood right now. And even those who didn't like him are gonna vote for him because they see how bad things are. They see the gas prices, which by the way are going up because now the shipping, the oil tankers have to go around Cape Horn in Africa because they can't navigate freely in the Red Sea coming out of the Middle East. That's the implication and the ramification of what's been going on. And also, you know, you see the price of food, which is huge. You know, Biden can crow, OK, the economy is doing great. The stock market is doing great. But you go to the store and you just buy a few cosmetics and you're going to spend 70 to, to 100 dollars or the food and everything else. Price of mortgages. Uh, the average home mortgage in this country, thirty three hundred dollars a month. And you don't get much for that at all, assuming you can even get a mortgage with these banks. And then you got the rampant crime in the major cities. You've got the fentanyl coming across the border. You've got drug traffickers, human traffickers, everything else, and a demoralized military that has its hands tied behind its back as Iran and the Soviet Union and communist China are ready to pounce. And that's notwithstanding North Korea, which has upped its nuclear program as well. So this is where we are. I think that in ordinary times, if the American people were educated, if they were concerned, if they weren't living in a dream world, not our supporters, Judah, but the average American in this country thinks it's all going to go away. Uh, we've got people in, in my own extended family that just sit there and watch TV. They drink. Uh, they carry on. You know, we're going to have a good time. We'll go play golf. We'll go play tennis. Leave me alone. I'm going to be dead in 10 years. So what do I care about my kids and grandkids and, and future generations? Well, that's not the way it's going to be because we are in a situation where the country is about ready to go down the drain, the world's about ready to explode, and here we are. I think we're in a revolutionary mode, and what these other states are doing, whether it's Maine or Colorado or whatever, they are declaring war on the United States, just like King George III declared war on the colonies. It's identical. In fact, it's worse. So, because King George did not outlaw uh, the right of assembly with the colonialists to, to, at least in some respects, govern themselves, very small respects, I might add, and that was a cause for the revolution. But uh, anyway, we've got about a couple minutes here in this segment, Judah. Give me your thoughts on that, because I think that this will be a flashpoint to a number of groups and people in this country, despite the fact that uh, January 6th protesters are being persecuted and make, forced to make confessions. Um, people are being arrested, like my client, Siaka Masakwa, that did nothing. I've got others the same way. Uh, this is a warning, don't rise up. But I think it's it's going to bubble over pretty soon. 
No, I mean, I think you're completely right. I think if you look at history and you look at what how Nazi Germany uh, was jailing your opponents, I mean, look no further than Russia right now. Putin's biggest opponent is in a Siberian colony right now. Uh, not to be heard of. This is this is this is not old. Uh, this is not old. Stra- I mean, this is old strategy. It's not new strategy. And people should be very scared. The fact that uh, Trump was taken off in Maine by some dimwit that used to work for the ACLU is uh, it should have everybody mad because it's not about Trump, Larry. It's about America and it's about our Constitution and it's about our law. And we're watching it all being broken apart systematically very quickly. Well, we're going to get to it in the next segment. It's the longest segment on Special Prosecutor with Larry Klayman. But as a segue, you know, again, the good coming out of the bad, because the American people are now able to see what I've been saying now for decades, what you've been saying after I indoctrinated you in this, uh, so to speak, uh, that our legal system is a corrupt cesspool. It is corrupt to the core. It's the most dishonest profession in this country, run by hacked lawyers, hacked judges, and others. And they could see it in what the Colorado Supreme Court did. And we're going to get back and talk about that in the next segment. So stay tuned. The Colorado Supreme Court, you want to call it that. Of course, the four judges who voted against Trump, uh, justices, if you want to call them that, were all appointed. Uh, They are not accountable to the people. They were not electable. Uh, they were probably appointed by uh, my uh, cohort in elementary school, John Hickenlooper, who's pretty far to the left. He was a really weird kid, as I said, when, in the last show. Uh, many of them were, and they're leftists, okay? And they didn't care about the law. You know, the, in Marx's Communist Manifesto, the ends justify the means. That was Karl Marx's approach you know, in the Russian Revolution, and it's the same approach by the left now. And they violated the law based upon uh, a report by the House committee that was investigating January 6th. Now, who comprised that House committee? Adam Schiff, Gerald Nadler, Jamie Raskin. By the way, all the people that uh, the D.C. bar donates money to. And this tells you something about what I talked about last time and how they're trying to eliminate conservative lawyers and Republican advocate lawyers and that kind of a thing. Really just, there are good bar associations, but this is not one of them. And this is what we're dealing with. And it's what Dershowitz talks about is the new McCarthyism. This is a situation where at least people are now seeing that these judges that sit over our country who have such tremendous power, who are able to change the law and do as they wish because they're not accountable. And federal judges, Colorado judges were, you know, state judges, but they still had similarities to the federal judges. They do what they want and they're not held accountable. They give themselves immunity. Uh, No one will touch them. The Supreme Court won't touch them because if they take away immunity, then the immunity will be taken away for Supreme Court justices. And they're frankly equally as compromised and corrupt. And occasionally they'll make a decent decision where they don't have to stick their neck out personally. Uh, But by and large, Judah, this is a lesson why we don't have a legal system, and it's why Freedom Watch created the people's justice system, the citizens' grand juries, the citizens' trials, the citizens' convictions, the citizens' sentencing, getting tongue-tied, and why we need to to move forward with that, why we need to declare independence. As we debated, you can see my hat, and we're going to be doing it at the Third Continental Congress, forming a new government and not a new nation, form a shadow government. Let's put people up who uh, you know, are worthy of being our leaders, being Uncle Sam, so to speak. Say hello to Uncle Sam. This is what we need to do. And we're at the breaking point right now. Your thoughts? No, listen, I, uh, I, I think you're, listen, you're completely right. The problem is where a while from getting your hopes and dreams. And what we need to do right now is focus. This is my biggest problem. I mean, I think we all share that our biggest problem, the same problem with Republicans is they just don't seem to know what they're doing. And, uh, you know, to quote Nixon, they're not fit to be dog catchers, people in the Congress, Larry. This is the perfect opportunity for so many of them to have 
to show their 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 brightness, their their level of competence. So you have DeWine, this Rhino Republican, who vetoed the trans stuff today. Right? We have a Senate seat up in Ohio. I don't understand for the life of me. Trump sort of showed a way to beat the media and to win, and that that other Republicans are st- are so scared or are so elitist to not realize that the base is us. They've lost. There's no grand old party, Larry. It's like, you you remember your parents used to have those uh, wedding year, the the wedding picture, what are the the wedding books? You know what I'm talking about? With all the pictures, right? Or bar mitzvah book, whatever the case is. Right, right, right. your bar mitzvah book or your wedding book. It's like Mitch McConnell has those. And he thinks like if he opens them up, he could still invite the same people that were in that book 50 years ago. Well, I got bad news for you, Mitch. They're all dead. Okay. That yeah. whole well, wedding. Mitch house. is dead. I mean, I don't yeah. <laughs> Right. But that, but my point exactly is that whole wedding. Cry these days. Right. That whole wedding album is dead. The, where are the new pictures? Okay. I know you hate us, but where are the new album? Understand that Larry. And they can't grasp it or they don't want to grasp it. It's I've never seen the top of a party be so out of touch with a massive part of their base, Larry. I mean, you might have witnessed it, but I've never seen anything like this in my life. Well, you can just watch Jim Jordan and James Comer on Capitol Hill and and reach that conclusion. You know, one appearance after another on Fox News. Oh, we're pursuing an impeachment inquiry. There is no intent to impeach Biden. There is no intent to impeach Alejandro Mayorkas. There's no intent to impeach anyone. They want them to be there on November, whatever it is, 2024, on that Tuesday, because they think they're going to get power. And then you've got this idiot, uh, Ronna McDaniel, who is running the Republican National Committee. And God knows what she's got on everyone that she gets to stay and do that. And then you've got uh, the senators and congressmen who just run around Capitol Hill like chicken without their heads on. You know, I, I think, you know, I love Woody Allen and, and uh, you, his, yeah, his, his wisdom. And I remember the movie, everything you wanted to know about sex, but we're afraid to ask where he plays the court jester. And the king says, bring me the fool. OK, <laughs> that's, that's Woody Allen. That's what I consider to be the congressmen and senators. Bring me the fools. OK, these are the ones that are running our country. The only thing is, unlike Woody Allen and the court jester, they're not funny. Okay. Many, most of them spend their time either having affairs with women or men or whatever they they do to occupy themselves up there. Uh, Many of them are not even really straight. They just have beards to pretend they're straight. And, and by the way, what happened with this transgender thing? I didn't know about that. Yeah. It was this morning. He vetoed, he vetoed the bill that was uh, put in legislation uh, to ban uh, under 18 hormone blockers and, uh, women in sports and all because anecdotal data of people coming to visit him and uh, tell them their stories. And Mike DeWine was just so touched by these uh, stories of dysmorphia and people, uh, you know, sadly desecrating their children's bodies or whatever the word you want to use. So yeah, he overturned that or he vetoed it, I should say. How does he get to veto it? How does one Senator get to veto it? No, he's the governor. And uh, okay. he's 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 the governor of uh, of the great state of Ohio. I forgot. I forgot. Yeah, I lived in Ohio for a while. I try to forget that. No, no, it's okay. Sherrod Brown is the Democrat that's up for uh, re-election. Uh, so, so the reality is, Larry, there are some good senators. I mean, we, there are there are some senators. I think that are trying to fight the good fight. As you raise the point, we have a dead person running the Republican Party, and uh, he, he's essentially. Uh, dead and if trump wins they're gonna have to have a reckoning and i want to see an open vote i want to see an absolute open vote against mcconnell uh we can't have him running the republican senate anymore we just simply cannot pass the baton this isn't like larry if if this were any other company the person would be fired i mean the person ron mcdaniel would be out right mitt romney would be out if it was any other thing than an oligarchy of power because you come from a state that's always red in a sense, 
Otherwise, these people would be gone, Larry, and people are terrified. Well, the problem is, Judah, I, I disagree with you a little bit here. You're allowed. Obviously, yes, on the short term, uh, we're stuck with the Republican Party, at least for the next year and a half. But we don't have to be stuck. We need new parties. And frankly, I think we need to modify. It needs to be a major change to our Constitution. I know you're not supposed to say that if you're a conservative. But frankly, we'd function better with a modified parliamentary system right now. Because at least in a parliamentary system, you can have a vote of no confidence and get rid of the prime minister and move on. How do you, what do you do in a situation like we have today with Biden, who's brain dead, stupid, and a criminal, and, and to the point that even the Democrats want to get rid of him, and they can't get rid of him? So we've got a long jam here, and, and we need to give some real thought to our Third Continental Congress. We need to come up with a plan. In fact, you can watch it on our website at freedomwatchusa.org. Please contribute to our cause with tax-deductible contributions because I I actually read, I watched it the other day, You know all of the suggestions that we had to fine-tune our Constitution. And we've got to do it right now. And, you know, and we've got to put it in stone because the Constitution that we have today, it's just a paper document. No one follows it. No one respects it. Uh, you know, it's it, it's it's meaningless, frankly, the way things are, are applied. And, and we need to get down to the brass tacks and we need to wake up people. We need to wake up the youth in this country. They, a, they can't speak. I mean, everything is like, 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 or um, 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 that's my generation. They, they don't think because they rely on, on cell phones to come up with conclusions on TikTok or, or God knows where. And you've got these kids running around in the streets that don't even know, you know what they're talking about. And just one example with Hamas and, and Israel right now, uh, and they become anti-Semites. They don't remember 9-11. They don't know the risks of terrorism, and they don't care. And then you got their parents who are out there having affairs with, with their wives and, and others who are, are just carrying on getting drunk all the time. I mean, it's, it sounds terrible, but it's true, you know, and, and this is where we are. Happy New Year. Yeah. Yeah, it, 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 I, listen, I agree with you. Here's the issue, Larry, and you're, you're raising because most people don't understand what a parliamentary system is. So introducing something that really literally nobody understands, it's like introducing like the idea of a bus system to Los to people or, or train system to people in Los Angeles. It would t literally take them 50 years to learn how to use it. And you know that as well as I well, do. They don't understand the current system. What's the right, right, right. Trust me, because parliamentary system is, is far more difficult. The bigger thing you're talking about, it, that you could be talking about, is, 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 is aligning with people that might not, that you might not agree with on every single thing for the greater good which we haven't done in this country in a long time. So to your point, take aside the fact that I disagree with Bobby Kennedy Jr. on a lot of things. There are certain issues that I do agree with him on and that are very important issues. So he's very anti-Trump, obviously, but that would not be a terrible ticket. And well, it's not going to happen, but the irony is that he will probably draw more roads away from Trump than he will from from Biden. But there was also a story this weekend, or this week rather, unbelievable, that Alejandro Mayorkas, the head of Homeland Security, nixed him getting Secret Service protection. Yeah. You know, his father was killed. His uncle was killed. You know, the Kennedys. Can you believe Not that? I'm complaining about that one. Biden, no. Biden, the Biden regime wants uh, Bobby Kennedy Jr. dead. I mean, that's the bottom line, basically. Because yeah, they got the wrong Kennedy. Uh, whether, whether you believe in the things that Bobby Kennedy is espousing. I do buy what he says with regard to vaccines, by the way. But if, whether you believe him or not, uh, he is taking 22% of the Democratic Party vote currently. Yeah. And and the good thing is that pe the, you, when you, I just want you, you to know, for your, the audience, it's very important to look at data and statistics when people see this, because like you said, he might take some Republican votes. The good thing is the states that he's taking them in. He's not going to be taking them in Wisconsin and the toss-up states. They're New York, they're California, they're Jersey. So fine, I, obviously we're not going to win those states anyways. Maybe Jersey, by the way. But uh, but my point, my bigger point, Larry, is, and I know, I, I know you believe in this too, is I'm not a huge Bobby Kennedy fan except a couple of things, but we need to start 
reaching out to people that we don't always agree with on every single thing. Listen, you and I don't agree on every single thing, and most people don't. I hope they don't. And that's where politics needs to get back to, in my humble opinion. Well, we're going to be right back uh, with the verdict section. Let me just say about Bobby Kennedy quickly, is that I admire him because he's willing to stick his neck out. I've had him on the show. I've talked to him. I don't agree with everything. But this is what we need today. We need people who are willing to express themselves, who have principles, and to stand by those principles. And so we'll talk about that when we get back. Until then, go to freedomwatchusa.org, give a tax-deductible contribution before the end of the year. We need to get bigger. We need more lawyers, paralegals, and more of the space. We'll be right back. And now the verdict, fellow patriots, ladies and gentlemen, or whatever you may deem yourself to be. I've got Uncle Sam, and I've got Donald Trump sitting next to me today. Fortunately, Donald hasn't said anything too controversial. Uh, if he ever is elected president again, he should frankly watch what he says because he's turned a lot of people off and he said some really dumb things over the years. But he also had an administration that was highly successful. And people can see that right now. They can see that we had a good economy, that we didn't have people running across the border like banshees, that we weren't infested with terrorists uh, that have embedded themselves into our country, that we didn't have foreign wars, that we weren't on the brink of having a major war with communist China over Taiwan, which, by the way, you know, I, I wonder, you know, whether that's a war worth fighting. I'm generally a hawk in many ways, but the Taiwanese probably fear, fear have more kinship to communist China than they do to the United States. And there's so much, so much investment going back and forth. Just get the computer chips out of there, basically, and let the Taiwanese defend themselves and give them what they need to do it. But when you really have time to do something, if you want to be an optimist, then just think about it. Go for a walk, you know, this New Year's. Think about your kids. Think about your grandkids. Think about future generations. Think about family members who just sit there and do nothing and just say, let the Republicans do it. Think about what it's going to be like for them. And even if, you know, you're up there in years, if you're retired, even if you're middle-aged or young, we can all agree that this country's in sorry shape. And in California alone, you can't walk anywhere without fear of getting attacked or mugged or whatever. You can't carry a firearm to any great degree to protect yourself, or you'll wind up getting arrested if you actually use it. You can't depend on the police to do anything because they've been gutted. Uh, they have no authority anymore, regrettably. You've got district attorneys that will let anybody that's arrested out. You can walk into a Best Buy and walk out with a TV for $950, no questions asked, particularly if you're a minority. And I'm telling it like it is. I mean, so at least Bobby Kennedy tells it like it is. And that should be our New Year's resolution. We need to speak the truth. We need to learn how to be advocates for our cause. And we need to risk everything to save this country. Give me liberty or give me death. Judah, you take it away for the rest. I agree with Larry Clayman 100%. Uh, it, 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 listen, I'd rather know what people are thinking. And this goes back to the original point of the show, right? Or the original part of the show, which was uh, the left has shown themselves to be who they are. I'm I'm happy with people uh, sharing their opinions. Some things I disagree with, many things I don't agree with, but at least I know where they stand. And when and that's the case, we could deal with it afterwards. Uh, somebody like Nikki Haley scares the bejesus out of me and she scares many people. Bobby Kennedy, at least... I'm not a huge fan of his, Larry. I'm not. I like him on a few issues, but at least he's intellectually honest on those two issues right. that I like, and, and which is going after the swamp and going after the other swamp, which is the FDA and those groups. That's his issue. Those are those are his. That's that's his. Uh, that's his. Uh, Bailey, Bailey, whatever you want to call it. So I, I'm tired of, and that's how you, the closest way, the quickest way to getting to your parliamentary system, which I think is an exceptional idea. I'm just trying to give you that shortcut and explain to you how the parliamentary system actually works. Well, it, not not the one that exists, but to modify it, to come right. up with a way to remove a president short of impeachment. We've never done it. We don't want to remove a president by virtue of assassination, God forbid. We don't advocate that. But that's the only way we've removed presidents in the past. And we need a legal and peaceful way to do it. And that's what we're looking at at Freedom Watch. 
You're hundred percent correct. And I just want to say this is new year's coming up. There's Larry's show. Larry is the master. Larry is America's lawyer. He does a lot of work for a lot of people for not often fun, sometimes fun and for free. And he runs a great organization, which is called freedomwatchusa.org. And they really need money to do God's work, which Larry has been doing for the better part of 40 years. So I'm not going to make... I'm not going to make Larry the schnar right now and beg. I'm going to schnar and beg for Larry and say, your donations do not go to waste. Larry is a great man that's helped save this country and that's helped save a lot of your civil liberties. So go to freedomwatchusa.org and give to Larry Clayman and freedomwatchusa.org. Goes to Freedom Watch, not me personally. But yeah. Uncle Sam says here, his head on my shoulder. Uncle Sam says, Happy New Year good can come from the bad and that's the theme of this show so stay tuned for next year we're going to save this country god bless you all god bless